to work the programs that are sold. But do we do we have to hire an additional person there? Uh, not this time, no, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Are the hydrants going to be any cost for insurance purposes, or do we do anything around that? No, the spacing of the hydrants is dictated by USDA. They will only fund a certain number of hydrants per mile of pipe, and um, I think two per mile is what they allow. Um, so that's what we designed. So, uh, 48, 49 percent of people have signed up. You still got 50, 51 percent. There's, there's still a healthy number out there that has, that has not signed up. But, however, for the feasibility of the project and the and the ability to start and keep going, we don't need them to sign up. We would certainly welcome them to sign up, but they don't need to sign up. So, is there any market for these old meters? Can we sell them? I don't know the answer to that. They're usually <laughs> sold for scrap. <laughs> uh, what you do there in the brass value there is is what they're sold for. So, Meters can't be reused. So you, you are going to step up the time <coughs> a little bit, please? We will move as quickly as we can. At this point, with your, uh, if the uh, resolution is presented as a matter of three, there's nothing else. No other hurdles are in way. Okay. I'm okay. questioning if you have an answer tonight. What is the cost for an additional hydrant? Get every thousand feet. Uh, it's about five thousand dollars. Uh -huh. So you buy your hydrant itself. Yeah. That's per mile. Per hydrant. 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 Per hydrant two per mile, we space them out intentionally to get them as close as we can to, to clusters of homes or to churches or to, to folks that can benefit from it. Yeah. And we avoid, we do our best to avoid putting a hydrant if we have a two mile stretch with nobody on it. We typically don't put a hydrant there and put it elsewhere where it can benefit from it. So, uh -huh. All favor say aye. 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 There was one other item associated with the motion to approve the We've got a motion approved um, by Mr. Peterson on D. We've got a second by uh, Mr. Cogdell. Any discussion on D? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Motion to the water board. Second. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, very much. We've got a motion to approve the motion. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 We are back for our monthly report out on the adult Medicaid audits. And based upon the recommendation from last month, hopefully you found something looking a little different in your packets. We did um, <coughs> separate the two groups of um, workers, the ones that are um, a year over, and then the ones that are below a year of experience. So, so <coughs> Was it much easier to read? Oh, yeah. Does it make much better sense? Oh, Great. I think we have finally <laughs> reached that. It's wonderful. You got those smiles. Yes. <laughs> that's not, not a lot of um, We are here though to run through those with you just quickly. Um, we were pleased with the results that we did see um, this month. Um, Ms. Nance, the program manager for that area, we will um, go through these quickly just to give you a high end overview. Um, the first chart you have is your application technical. Um, we actually do have um, two employees with concern there, and that's employee A and B. Um, everyone else. Oh, Ms. Ness, is, is this, which one is it the, the state monitors that we might have to pay back? Yeah, we'll do it. This is the technical. Okay. okay. Um, and then if you go to your next slide, you'll see your certification mm -hmm. eligibility, cool. in which all employees did meet the benchmark there of 96.8. Next was our recertification technical. Um, again, we had some, some issue there with technical, but that's not as, as um, I hate to use the word important, but it, it doesn't fall in the category of the eligibility. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, sure, this has got a 30 day improvement or how often do you check it to improve this work through? Like the A and B, how often when you get, how long will you reassess this? They are reassessed monthly. 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 Okay. 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 And then under our application eligibility, um, we saw improvement there from all employees. And that was that was the uh, first four were our employees with more than one year of experience. Um, our next chart would be for our employees with less than a year. Um, application eligibility. That struggles with employee G. We have next recertification eligibility, um, which was strong, 96, 100, and 100 for this month of November. And our next chart was application technical. We came up from our October month, but we're still struggling. There they are, less than a year. And then our last part was our recertifications technical. Um, I have a question. For employee G, for example, how on the adult Medicaid application, the technical one, they all, I mean, actually not just G on this one, they all dropped in the month of October. What was the difference between September and November? Like what caused them to... I mean, they plummeted. So what happened there? They began to actually work cases. Like the first time they were getting their hands on the case? Yes. So they were, prior to that, September, prior to they, that, were they were doing better October? They were doing um, policy and procedure mm -hmm. and testing with policy and procedure and in fast, and then they moved into actual case work. Actually, working cases, so we did cost them. So, but it did improve the following month. Yes. Okay. Well. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That makes sense. This chart is much better. Mr. Speaker, um, God does. Uh, your suggestion did make a difference in your job. I'm sure you should appreciate it. You, you did last time. I've been at a boy. Yeah. 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 Ladies, uh, thank y'all so much. You've been over backwards. I know it's taken a lot of time to do these charts and, and get them where we commissioners want them. It, I guess that's what we want. But just thank y'all so much for what you're doing. Thank you. Yes, sir. I just got a question. Uh, if I go in and apply for Medicaid mm -hmm. and uh, if I have resources that where I can't qualify, do you take an application or just give me an informal denial? Application. You still got to take an application? Wow. Well, we don't know until we get your application and see what type of resources are necessary. But, that you so, have. You, I mean, you don't have, like, you don't do, like, a pre-interview with them? Okay. That's what they consider preferred. Okay. And those are big, that is a big board with the I thought maybe you did pre-interview pre uh, questions and then... You have to fully look at the case. Thank you, ladies. Thank, Thank you. you. I have a Merry Christmas. Thank you, too. Appreciate what you do. Health and Human Services, Mr. Terry Duncan. Um, so item A is consider asking you guys to consider approval of a contract with the Duke University regarding a clinical nurse training and that's for a nurse practitioner. Motion, Second. Motion. Motion from Ms. Trevor. We got a second by Dr. Mungoins. I was having to check something. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. Mr. Chairman, can we, can we come by now? Unless you have any questions on CDE, we have a second by um, Mr. Bullock. Any discussion at all? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Merry Thank you. Merry Christmas. Mr. Dean Marsh, Stolen Water Conservation. <laughs> <laughs>
Good evening. Uh, first thing I want to do is let's talk about an amendment to our current contract with Division of Soil and Water. Uh, what this will do is it will give us one additional year uh, to, and to utilize some funds that where they came in under budget where we actually um, estimated the cost of projects and they came, the bids came in lower and this, uh, we don't have to return these funds, it can be used on additional projects. Uh, well, projects. That's <laughs> yeah, it's great. Now, now, believe it or not, this is still Matthew money. Uh, we've got money requested for, for Florence and uh, we just became eligible uh, as a federal disaster county for, for Dorian, yeah. which was a huge surprise. So we'll be able to request funds for that too. So, How much um, time do we have on that? On which? On the date. Uh, on this first one, the two, it's, um, it's going to be till December 31st, 2020. The other ones haven't even been written yet. So they're, they're going to, you know, it, it, this thing will last for for a few years now. So, mm -hmm. um, another situation, the beaver. Beaver management, uh, we started with our, our new system November 1st of this year. Uh, what we want to do, Bo Benton, has been assigned to Bladen County. He's splitting his time with Bladen and Robinson County. Um, if anyone has any beaver requests, contact the Soil Water Office or the Extension Office. We'll get you in touch with Mr. Um, Bo Benton. Um, we do have a board that we want to have our first meeting probably the 1st of February because that'll be the first quarter completed and we can get an assessment of how things are going. So that would be probably the time period we're shooting for on that. Mr. Dean, can, yeah. can I, could, we, could that board meet a little earlier to get the information to get out to the community? Because I know one of those board members have asked me when they were going to meet, and that right. might be a good way to get you a good line something a little sooner. We can. Okay. And, and phone number, too, Mr. Dean. Yeah. All right, yeah, it would probably be good to put an article in the paper on Blade Online also. Um, to, right. to get the word out that we do have a system in place and for everyone to utilize it. We've been getting a lot of calls, but And the people we wanted are district people, so they should, they may, can help you Right. Thank you, sir. Mr. Dean, could I ask you, how will we be as, uh, brought up to date with the progress of this project? How, how are you going to do that? The uh, APHIS are keeping records on the customers that are servicing. We need to know that so we can communicate with Blade County Finance on that also. Um, but we'll have a report that we haven't had before. So we'll be able to keep up. And also the, the trapper who is both bent will come to our meetings and give us a written report. Okay. Okay. Um, Mr. Chair, one question. Instead, I mean, I, I, I support putting online. However, we have a lot of folks who do not have access for a or access to internet. Flyers. We could actually do that and put that in the local store. Right, yes. It's that would yeah. be another, That's right. another good source. Yes, sir. Uh, you said this is a coalition with Robinson County? Well, I learned when he came in my office the other day that he is splitting his time with Robinson County. Okay. Did you work big stuff all the way through <laughs> He sure did. Well, that's the question this week. Uh, <coughs> the county had funds where NV was called Beaver to pay for. No, we're not doing anything on the purple. Not at this point, no. I like you if you would, Mr. Mark, come from time to time and give us an update on it. We'll do. We want to make sure our buddy's sitting there beside you satisfied. Well, like a quality report or something like that. Okay. Um, third thing I want to talk to you about is this is very new. Um, this is a, a cooperative effort between Southeastern North Carolina and, and South Carolina, um, really the Horry Georgetown area, where all of our southern part of our county and western part of our county, the water flows. And we're, we've got a strong effort trying to clean out these rivers. But when we hit the South Carolina line, nothing's happening. 
They still have a lot of debris there. They have um, they have infrastructural problems with bridges, with not and a, a good layman term is some of the culverts going under the roadways have two culverts and they need ten. So this is a problem that they've known about for a long time, it goes back to the 50s when the original studies started. And now we've had a lot of population boom, Myrtle Beach area, but all of our water um, from our southern and western part of our county, we're on the upper end, goes that direction. So there's been two meetings so far, and so far they're calling this the Waccamaw Watershed Study Group. Um, they're, we would like to appoint a member of the um, com uh, commissioners here to be on that study group on the decision making process. So that's not something you need to do tonight, but be thinking about it, who you think would be most useful on this committee. Um, these funds, there's also there's already been some funds pledged from South Carolina. They would like our Cape Fear RCND to manage those funds. And um, it, with just two meetings so far, we've had representatives, two um, representatives from the state house and uh, in South Carolina, and they've already pledged a significant amount of money. So this is really good. Um, so uh, RCMD will vote Wednesday to adopt this as a project or not. And I'm sure they will because it's going to affect so many people. Um, and what this is right now is to get an engineering study to find out the best way to get this water flowing. Um, the water right now gets between the Walk Walkamaw River, Lumber River, it goes and gets about six miles from the Atlantic Ocean. And then it has to meander 115 miles before it ever actually reaches the Atlantic Ocean. And you can see that, I mean, it's full of blockages. So, uh, this is, and it's going to take hundreds of millions of dollars to fix this. And it's going to take a federal effort. So, with the cooperation of the two counties, two states, uh, maybe we can get something done. Yeah, that's clear. Um, uh, on the like, I know on the eastern end of the county, they have a, a lot of problems with land perking. The land to perk, we actually use it to make it useful for building those type of things. Is there any way that your project could periodically check to see how that water level? Do they do anything with that? That's what I'm asking. So, if a person was to look at their property to determine whether that land is getting where it's not so. And they would war. Do they ever check that to see if that's happening? No. Or how do you do that? You know, uh, soils are based on the hydrology of the soil. Mm -hmm. Some soils naturally have high water tables, and that's where you're going to get the water that come in soils that do not perk. Mm -hmm. um, you can alter that some by if you have a ditch system that works, but a ditch system has to have an outlet. Uh, a lot of the water in your area, some of it can go to the Cape Fear River and some of it can try to go the other way. Um, but it's it's naturally a wetter area there. The re uh, mainly what we're trying to do here is prevent flooding, where we've had uh, a lot of towns, Lumberton has flooded, Bladenboro has flooded, Clarkton has flooded, and this is gonna be ev everything from that, that flows that way will give an outlet to it. Okay, the only reason I was asking, I hear a lot of people have a concern that they'll look at property and this human eye, I don't know. And they say that they have to pay to get a perk test to see if it's any good. And I'm just wondering, is there anything available for these guys to do more this thing? Yes, the district department, that's the health department. So they would so to check the, the land surface, water surface, y'all don't do that. Okay. Can I ask you no, no. Martin, when I sent that email to you about those ditches were all clogged up so mm -hmm. the water can't drain, but I, and I also asked you, Two branches have not been cleaned, so I know there's two two different things. But is that just DOT? That's on road. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay, that's what I saw down there. I know some people say they want to perk your property and have to pay to get it done. I'm just wondering if you regulate to see if if you drain ditches and doing what you're talking about doing, clearing beaches out, is it affecting the property y'all assess and see what's happening with the property? Mr. Good. So, okay. Mr. Chairman, the uh, Range committee <clears throat> that we're talking about. I would like to uh, nominate Mr. Charles Red Peterson to that committee. 
We have a motion on the floor for Mr. Gooden and a second for Mr. Dallas to nominate Mr. Peterson. Which committee are you talking about now? On this particular board that he's picking up to represent North and The board that we're talking about. Mark Rubin. Do you want to write anything on the board? I think we're going to close. We're going to close. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Another job, Mr.
with everything that we're doing out of the Item number three is um, we've sought bids for audit services for the next five years. Uh, as you can see in your packet, I sent it out to 11 different firms. We heard back from five. Two declined to bid, three did bid. Thompson Price bid a packet of $226,500 for the five years. Martin Starnes did $340,800 for the next five years. And Maudin Jenkins did $257,000 for the next five years. Yes, sir. So this audit proposal you got, does it cover the cost that we just had to approve? No, so this is for the next fiscal year. I know, but is it going to cost any, is it going to be additional money? I mean, when There's you contract a, something out, to me, the contract should be whatever the audit has to do. There shouldn't be no extra money. At the times when they come up with the state, ask them to do additional testing. They also tell us at the state level that there may be some additional fees required. And I'm saying all that should be in the audit. Should be in the contract. This, in the here, contract. this is our base contract. Yes, Mr. Chairman, that, that is a very good question. And just to elaborate on Ms. Coleman's response, um, this would include everything except uh, special work that is assigned or required by the state. And that is unknown at this point, so it would be hard to, I mean, it would be impossible, I guess, to be able to account for that. I guess what you're saying, Pat, in it? Yeah. I guess what you're saying, if it's, if it's something caused by them and their problem, then it should be covered. Right. Yeah. Right. It, it would only, the, only, right. the only exception would be state required. Right. right. The question yes, I got, how long have we had Thompson Price be doing all? Yeah. You can remember the last time you used. I've been with us since 1996. Okay. okay. How, how do you check the audit to be being audited by the same person yeah. all the time? Okay. How do you, how you do that? I'm trying to I'm That's trying a to good question. Because yeah, I just that. went over that with, uh, we had a meeting, um, what was it, a couple weeks ago? And they've changed the standards and everything about uh, financial statements. With that being said, he has a second review. Not only do I look over it to make sure it looks okay with what I know is in our audit and what's in our books, he also has another firm outside of his individual office that's under the Thompson Price umbrella. They review it as well. Do we get a report that audit that they do? He lets me know what Greg says. His name is Greg Adams out of Wilmington. So we don't. So that, that's the only thing I'm saying, you know, is if everybody checking all the books the same and it's doing the same thing year to year, it might be kind of consistent. They kind of team up together and they review each other's work. You check all it. And yes, also, sir. they have peer review. Every, is it every three years? Every three years. Every three years, they have intensive peer review, so they have to submit so many so many audits or so much of their work, and it's reviewed by peers. And another thing, too, is there's an annual financial report that I have to do myself each year. It has to balance back to the audit as well. But I have to take my information to make sure it balances. That, that's the only thing I'm just trying to figure out. How do you check an audit on an audit? Right. Somebody's do doing it all the time. How do you say that we will just, we select a new one every five years? Yes, so well, it home. used to be where we could do it every three years and then you can have to, to renew every two to three years. But most of the first, because they're getting so hard to find firms. I actually went through the LGC website and looked at all the firms, and the ones that I've chosen were the top 10, and we did see them with the Preston Douglas because it had been local. But the top 10 of the whole state, Martin Starnes was the number one with having the most audits, and number two was Thompson Price within the state of North Carolina. So, and that means not just Brian here in Elizabethtown, that means the one in Whitemore in Wilmington. And the, but, so that's how we kind of pick who we will send them to. And the difference between those two is, is $114,000 over, mm -hmm. over a five year period. But, but, but the, thing, the reason I asked this question, mm -hmm. the gentleman that does Thompson and Price, he said right in that chair one day, and he said the only time he looked for something specific is to be asking. He said he don't look for anything specific. Well, I'm going to tell you the truth. He searched more this time financially, and it all depends on what the state puts on him as far as compliance work. He looked at more financial work this time than he ever has. Okay, that was the only reason I asked that question. So I'm glad. I was thankful. Because he, he, he said that I don't look for anything out of the ordinary unless you ask me to. Right. And I'm just trying to figure out how to be know that we have to ask the question. Right. And they don't do the Medicare, do they? Does he do? He does. Medicare still does. Matter of fact, he's not through with DSS. 
He's actually got to meet with them and to review some of the stuff, and they've actually got a team will come back in to compete to finish some of the compliance work. We're going to take a recess just for a moment, please. I hear the guy tell me I have 